Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, How CDK Global Has Mastered Remote Collaboration. My name is Casey Marshall and I'm on the marketing team here at Realtime Board and today I will be your moderator. I would now like to introduce Rachel Austin, Director of User Experience at CDK Global. Rachel, take it away. Thank you, Casey. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I want to thank you once again for being here. I'm really excited to share with you today. By way of introduction, I'm Rachel Austin, Director of User Experience at CDK Global. CDK is a leading global provider of technology solutions to the automotive industry. Our user experience team gets to innovate, create, and design cutting-edge technology that makes car dealerships stronger. To do this, we need to collaborate well. I'm guessing the topic of remote collaboration is likely one you've discussed and are possibly working through now. I'm hoping to help you out today by sharing my experience and mastery of remote collaboration in a global workplace. So let's talk about how we might be more enabling, productive, and efficient with the talent that we have and where they happen to be working. I've asked a few global team members to join me today to collaborate on this discussion. You can probably see them hanging out in the real-time board at this time. Chris, Trisha, Jake, Tara, and Felix will all be supporting a live demo for you, so hang on and we'll go through a real sprint process with our team. Just a fair warning though, you may not like this session if you're tired of hearing about sprints, collaboration technologies, or new tools, things that are still works in progress at CDK and around remote work environments. A little bit about my background. Previously, I was managing a mobile innovation center where product design and development were co-located. We could literally finish each other's sentences. Walking into CDK, a globally distributed design organization, where many of our designers hadn't worked together before, and they certainly hadn't had the opportunity to meet face-to-face. -face. With a company remit and leadership ask to embrace design thinking in a fully engaged, distributed environment without constant travel. Before we could fix how our team was working, as UXers and designers, we first set out to identify specific collaboration problems. I've invited my team and I invite you to think about what are your biggest successes as well as your biggest challenges in remote collaboration. And go ahead and jot them down. As Casey mentioned, we'll have questions at the end. You might consider some of the biggest successes being video opportunities, or sometimes just picking up the phone to have a call. In addition to that, some of our biggest challenges might also be not being in locations where there's same time zones. And we're also not in the same space where we're able to easily get up and walk around. So with our collaboration problems now out on the table, we set out to tackle our design challenges. And probably not unlike many of you, our design challenges at CDK are complex. We have over 140 products and 70 logins across our customer base. And with 1,600 engineers and only 40 designers to support, we needed to start making some of our first hard decisions. And one of these was we wouldn't support all 140 products. Instead, we would unevenly support strategic products. And we acknowledged everyone is a designer and everything is designed. And one of our greatest collaboration challenges around design was honestly a lack of a consistent framework. And so as designers, we sought out to build a design language and systems to support better collaboration. 
But we knew it wasn't enough to just build these systems. We needed tools to communicate our systems to our remote audiences. And there are many tools out there that support this. In CDK's case, we leveraged a tool called Frenify to do just that. And we learned that no matter the robustness of the design language or the systems we had in place, that culture beats out process and sometimes even talent. And to enable a strong remote culture, think not only of the tools that you use, but what are the offline experiences you want to use and create? Here are a few of the declarations that we print out at CDK to post in our workspaces that remind us of the type of team we want to be and the culture we want to have and invoke. I've invited my team back to discuss, and I invite you to think about, how can we best enable a culture for remote collaboration? At CDK, we use everything from instant messaging tools to video to Hangouts. We also think about creating a strong remote culture offline with posters or shared artifacts that we maybe pass around the office, common books we can reference and relate to, all good aspects of creating a strong remote culture. So what were some of the lessons that we learned when putting these ideas into practice? We know that fundamentals matter. And it's hard enough executing a design sprint when we're all in the same room. Remote sprints require the same ingredients for success. You need the right people, focus, level of effort and energy, but you also need the right technology and infrastructure to support a solid remote sprint. And what we've learned at CDK, this means sprints require pre-work and a lot more of it. Here's just a sample of some of the pre-work we do before we head into a remote design sprint. The team structure matters as well, and it's probably unique to your company. So what worked previously for you or within another team may need to be rethought when you're inviting stakeholders to your design sprint. And through trial and error and a lot of hard work, we now know what works best for our team. It's my personal belief that workplaces are unique and if you haven't already taken the time to identify yours, think about what will work best for you. The big impacts that we've had building strong remote sprint cultures are getting the right teams in the right place. When they can't be in the right place, conducting remote sprints that has open doors for the team and increase their knowledge of technical tools this helps them to communicate greatly. Getting a remote workforce fully engaged, the opportunities to collaborate have significantly increased for us. And allowing the company not to be a slave to logistics, whether that be your location, your time zone challenges, maybe space constraints, commutes to the office, and on. We've figured out ways to use collaboration tools like Realtime Board to remove these barriers. And saving big money, right? Remote sprints can save thousands in travel and expense costs. And that makes an impact to the bottom line. Before we jump into the real-time board live sprint collaboration, for those that may not be familiar, just a quick background on how we run design thinking sprints at CDK using the Google Sprint process. Using the Google Sprint process, we typically conduct a five-day sprint, starting with the opportunity challenge, driving through to prototyping and customer feedback. Here are the tasks that we go through on a design sprint in day one. I'll walk you through how we make this brainstorming visual to eliminate unnecessary noise and discussion, keeping everyone engaged. We start at the end. Agreeing a long-term goal for our sprint, 
that allows us to focus. And we challenge ourselves by asking, how can we fail and what do we need to answer? And then we amp up the visuals by mapping the process, listing our key players, goal, and flow charting the journey. Next, we bring in experts to validate our thinking. Now this can get tricky with remote collaboration and it's where your emphasis on pre-work can really pay off. At CDK, pre-work for bringing in experts includes ensuring they have the technology and tools prior to their session. I can't speak for all experts, but we can anticipate that they won't always do their pre-work. So a helpful tip is to pause before kicking off each sprint section and demo the use of the tool. Next, we target what our proof of concept will address. We do this by defining how might we ideas, organizing the notes, and voting. And finally, we end day one by picking the most important customer and target moments. On day two of the design sprint, it starts to get really exciting as the visuals amp up and idea formation begins. We typically start the day with lightning demos these are short snippets of our favorite products or solutions from different domains, and they're relevant to our problem. Helpful tips here include ensuring your team has tested their demos in your remote environment before kicking off the session. And again, if you're inviting experts to share, pausing to walk them through the remote tools before they start is always helpful. Now, depending on how big your sprint team is, or how complex your problem is, you'll need to decide if you'll move forward together or break up into groups. With real-time board, your canvas is unlimited, so no space constraints. But a helpful remote collaboration tip here is if your canvas fills up significantly, you may want to create new boards to optimize performance. The visuals continue to amp up during the sprint sketching activity. This is one space where it's likely easier for your sprint team and more likely your stakeholders to just use standard paper and pen to draw. Another remote tip, our team finds it efficient to take a picture of paper artifacts created during the sprint and upload them using real-time board mobile app onto the board canvas. And at the end of day two, we start looking for customers we can test our solution with later in the week. Day three of our sprint is when we rate, critique, and vote around our strongest ideas. And now we have our sketches uploaded to the board. We can easily use the sticky notes and voting tools to review and pick our best ideas. On day four, we get down to building a prototype. And it's easy for the prototypers to access the winning concepts on the board even interact through their commenting tools. And if they have a question or want to provide a suggestion, they can do that. On day five, it's all about getting the feedback, asking the right questions, and identifying the patterns to plan for next steps. Now that you have a sense for what it takes to run a design sprint, and I appreciate those of you that hung in there that were already familiar. As promised, we have a real example and live view to share with you. The challenge we wanna share with you today is a recent design sprint we ran with our product team. The challenge was, how do we improve our digital contracting signing ceremony? Or how about we enable a customer to sign all of their paperwork electronically whenever and wherever it makes sense for them. I've invited my remote team to start collaborating. And you'll notice we've taken advantage of the templates in the board to swiftly prep and effectively communicate our ideas. We find the use of templates create a real advantage to bringing a consistent and recognizable experience as we conduct design thinking sprints around CDK. And we even created customized templates that can be reused, helping our design sprint be easily identifiable and readily stand out as a service to our business. 
You can see the team has added our goals, how might we in a risk, and what questions we want to answer. Once we have our ideas down, we focus in on our map. Amping up the visuals helps us remove unnecessary noise and discussions. There are many ways to make a map. In our design sprint process, we like to keep it simple. The first step is listing our actors or the important characters in our story. Next, we write the ending. It's a lot easier to figure out the ending than everything in the middle. It's important to keep in mind the map should be functional. Boxes and arrows suffice. Real-time board makes this easy for us with the use of shapes and arrows, or as you'll see demoed shortly, our team typically prefers the freeform design tools available for speed and flexibility. Bottom line, keep it simple. It's easy if your stakeholders get stuck filling in the middle of the map to navigate to different areas of your board to review previous artifacts and bring ideas back to them. Here's an example of a simple map. I've invited my remote team to start demoing how we create a map to solve our challenge of allowing customers to sign all of their paperwork electronically. Here you'll see three different ways in which the team is using the tools in the real-time board to create a simple map. In each map, they've listed our actors on the left, and note actors don't just include customer. They can also include related characters, such as sales and support, and they have our goals listed on the right. And the hardest effort, again, is typically filling in the middle, where the team has used simple boxes and arrows to denote the ideal journey. And as needed, they can easily jump off this frame to gather additional detail from other frames and quickly navigate back. So you can see there's three different variations of a simple map using either freeform drawing, sticky notes, or plain text to get the map idea and function across. In the design sprint process, we recognize no one knows everything. So we invite experts in. In our example, most experts were remote. And this meant we had to share a new tool and ensure their technology worked. As part of our discussion with the experts, we listen to their feedback and ask, how might we? These thoughts are captured on sticky notes within our board. In our design sprint, the team worked to capture as many how might we's as possible. There can never be enough. We often find when working remote and together alone, there are many duplicate how might we's posted to the board. A helpful tip is to assign a team member to identify and consolidate duplicates as stickies get posted in order to increase efficiency and unnecessary noise. And you can see the team here doing just that. This helps prepare for the next step, which is to organize the how might we's on the board. I've invited the team to organize our sprint how might we's into groups, using a meaningful label to capture the grouping. It's helpful if duplicates have been previously identified and consolidated. And the tier, the team has used the orange stickies to again apply a meaningful label and group the how might we's into categories that make sense for the problem that we're trying to solve. Now it's time to vote. It's a good practice to review the sprint goal and questions during this session. Allow time for the team to work together alone to vote. And when the voting's over, we take the how might we notes with the most votes and move them over to our map. 
On our map, the team can pull the how might we notes with the most votes to identify moments of truth or important areas of focus. So in this instance, the team is working on mapping the moments of truth and pulling the most critical how might we and opportunity areas into the map. Now it's time to identify a target. The team works together to identify areas on the map to target. Using the board's drawing tools, it's easy to select and erase target areas. So you can see the stickies have identified the moments of truth where we have opportunities for better air handling, getting rid of pens, converging information in the signing room, and the team then considers what are those critical areas of target. And this helps us hone our prototype when we get to that section of the design sprint. In day two of our sprint, we're ready to remix and improve. We start the day out with our lightning demos as a team and stakeholder demo solution. We use the board to make a list of what inspires us and designate team members to sketch the big ideas. We also designate team member to be the timer for lightning demos. It's helpful to have someone other than the facilitator keeping everyone on track. I've invited the team to start organizing some of the big ideas from our sprint sketched during our lightning demo session. And sketching rather than grabbing screen captures helps stakeholders to see how the ideas might work in their product. The sketches become agnostic to the screen or web in which they were pulled from. The remainder of day two is primarily spent sketching. This can be an uncomfortable but fun activity for your stakeholders. A key takeaway is that everyone is working together alone. This helps raise the energy throughout the end of the day. And as the team begins to sketch, it's useful to remind them that anyone can sketch it doesn't need to be perfect, just self-explanatory. We're looking for concrete ideas and ask that they use words to describe what they're sketching. Here are a few sketch examples from our sprint. It was easy to upload the sketches on our board after the session, often using the mobile app. When guiding the team through sketching, such as the Crazy 8 sketch pattern example here, it's useful to demo these activities in order to help stakeholders have a visual for what they are going to do. And here's another example of the Crazy 8 sketch pattern. It's a lot of fun. On day three, it's time to decide. There are several activities the team uses to help them decide. We start out by posting our solutions on the board. And the great part of having unlimited space on the board means there's plenty of room for solutions. Team members are then given stickers and asked to mark parts that they find interesting with the solutions. We quickly discuss the highlights of each solution and the solution owner is asked to share ideas that were missed during the readout. A useful reminder, even when running remote sprint, ask your participants to stand up for this session. It's likely to raise the bar on their engagement. The team used sticky notes to capture the big ideas. And here's an example of a couple solutions from our sprint with stickies highlighting the interesting ideas.
I've invited the team to showcase how we use the tools in the board to vote on interesting parts of the solution. If your solutions are complex and you have multiple topics that you want to vote on, it's easy to make as many colored dots as needed to denote different topics. So perhaps you want to denote sales topics with blue dots and support topics, interesting remarks with orange dots. Easy to do. You can see the team here has taken the opportunity. Each of them have an equal number of votes to vote on the concepts, the winning concepts and ideas within the board. On day four, it's time to storyboard. And this really guides the prototype. We often use the frames tool within Realtime Board to aid in tagging our decision criteria and building a storyboard for stakeholders and development to follow. Here you're seeing an example of a frame of a multitude of screens getting ready for our prototype. On day five, we're ready for testing. To maintain a consistent repository or one-stop shop, we pull the results from our user test back to the board for reference and discussion. And here you can see examples of the feedback details from the user session. In addition to pulling all our user test results, it's helpful to summarize the outputs of each day on the board for future reference and discussion. Here's an example of our day one sprint board. I encourage you to make brainstorming visual by leveraging remote collaboration tools with post-its, stickies, whiteboards, and use the together alone principles of the design sprint to help eliminate unnecessary discussion. Here's a snapshot of our day two board. And again, you can see the concepts laid out in a frame with notes, stickies used for notes, and the voting criteria aligned. And it's easy to see the winning solutions with the votes applied. You can also export sprint outputs like this to have both the virtual and local visual cues to create the culture that you're striving for. And it's also helpful to export the outputs like this and save them to another location so you have multiple backups of all of your sprint materials. Here you can see every output from our goal to our how might we, to a map, to our questions and our prototyping and our voting and our final solution recommendation. Thank you for your time. Hopefully you learned something new. I certainly enjoyed sharing with you today. And I'll turn it back over to you, Casey. So I want to sincerely thank Rachel for just taking the time to share how CDK has mastered their uh, remote collaboration and some best practices. And um, thank you to our listeners just for attending today's webinar. And on behalf of Real Time Board and our presenter, Rachel, thank you so much for joining today. And I hope you have a great rest of your day or evening.